Hello and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. And I'm Val. And you happy snow year. Oh, I mean new year. <laughs> <laughs> we made it to a new year, friends. We did. It yeah. is officially 2023. I don't know Woo! if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is a thing. It's a thing. We can't oh, really yeah. do anything about it. So. <laughs> we're quietly and we're not putting up any kind of stink. We're just going to gently... Step in and see where it goes. Yeah. No, yep. no large pro proclamations for me. No large uh, announcements. Just sneak it in and keeping it quiet. Tip yeah. Going. Yeah. <laughs> My dog just went outside to eat the snow, and that's it. Like I let okay. him out, and he just so went out, and he's just hydration the snow. is important. No, I think he just really was like, huh? Like this is a lot of snow out here. This is the first time. <laughs> I think he's lived in this house where there's just really feet come down. of snow, like pristine yeah. snow outside. Yeah. Because like, like, oh, I was just going to say, this is perfect snowman making weather. So yeah, I'm know. not doing that. <laughs> Tracy, just keep it down real quiet. I don't want anybody in my house to hear this idea that you just no fun floated will out be there. Had. <laughs> it is, it is wet and heavy. That's for sure. Yeah. So, Listen, we we are on the tail end of Christmas break. They go back to school on Wednesday. We are funned out. We are just the fun tickets are gone. It's, the bucket it's gone. is kicked in the corner. <laughs> we're we're now at the point where it's like just you know because now we're starting to get to the fights of she's breathing my air. He's mm. looking at me funny and those kind of things where it's like I kind of okay. want to just come over with the popcorn and watch this. No, it is not. It's not fun. <laughs> Sit in the corner. It might be. It for is other when people. it's. It's not, yeah. they're not my kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Last, yeah. Last night we, we did the whole staying up until midnight thing. I had one of my kids, Marin, the, the second youngest, who was like uh, determined she was going to make it to midnight. Everybody else was like, yeah, we're going to try, you know, whatever. And so about 10 to midnight, we gathered everybody around so we could watch the ball drop that actually happened two hours before midnight. It's fine. Uh, we're the forgotten time zone. It's the way it goes. Um, and we gathered them all in so we could watch it. And we're like, well, where's Marin? And they're like, oh, she fell asleep. So she was the only one that didn't make it. And I felt oh, kind of bad because she was determined. Oh, so. poor little thing. I almost did not go out. I haven't gone anywhere minus Disneyland the year that I went there for New Year's. But like we yeah. were in our hotel room. But like I haven't gone and like celebrated New Year's Eve outside of my house in like four years. Um, and we were invited by my friend Dina from Good Things Utah to go oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Um, to a little house party and Dave tattooed the day before from noon until 1230 in the morning Ooh, wow. that's a long and day. just was like beat. And then yesterday I think it caught up to him because he was not feeling great last night and oh. didn't sleep at all. But do you know what he did? He drove me to my party and then he came and picked me up. <laughs> It was the best. So I did, because I wasn't, like, you know me. I'm like, oh, I'm so gung-ho to go somewhere. And then the day of going to that place, I'm like, uh, do I want to yeah. leave my house? <laughs> do I want to put people clothes on? Dave's not feeling good. Like, I could totally Every text. reason not to and go. Then, like, you know, and then I'm like, no, stop it. Like, stop it. So I'm like, okay, there's one dress in my closet that I love that I want to wear. If it doesn't fit, I'm not going. I put it on and Dave's like, that looks great. So what's your next? <laughs> what's the next excuse we could cross off the list? So I'm like, there isn't one. So I actually, I put on a dress, guys. I put on a good. dress. Wow. I put on heels. I wore old lady sandals in the car. And oh, then I put right. the heels on like just to Smart. go to the party. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was so funny because do you guys ever have this happen where you go someplace and someone that you have been friends with on social media for a long time, 
you finally both meet in person. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that happened to me last night and we're both trying to figure out how we know each other. We have a lot of friends in common. <laughs> We've both been dancing all of our lives, like all this stuff, but we couldn't, can't figure out like how we became friends on social That's media. Funny. And yeah. we're all, we're pretty like, we're just like a year apart in age. And so we graduated high school around the same time, but he went to Cottonwood. I went to Taylorsville. So of course, Cottonwood, you know, yeah. 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 Taylorsville, whatever. T-ville. T-ville. Right. Um, but yeah, so that was really fun. Like just like chatting. And then I was talking to him and his husband and they got married at Tracy Aviary. And hey. I was like, we like birds. You're bird people? Yeah. yeah. Out, so. out of all the aviaries, I have to say, I think Tracy Aviary is probably Tracy's favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just thought that was kind of fun. Like, we're both like. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Dina introduces us. And I'm like, I actually think we're friends on social media. And he's like, we are. And he's like, what's your name? And I told him, he's like, we are. He's like, and I was just trying to figure out the other day. How we know each other. I'm like, me too. But so, so funny. So I have a new now friend. You have a, now you have a new bestie. It, I guess it could have been a little awkward if he had like unfriended you. Because he's like, I don't know who this person oh, is. And then two days later, yeah. ran into you. I was like, oh yeah, I think I just unfriended you. Because I had no idea who you were. <laughs> no, he is perfectly delightful. And well, But yeah, it was like, you walk in and you see all these people that you see like on social media. And and then but no he posted a picture of us today um and tagged me and so i'm like okay then it wasn't just like a nice person being that's, nice yeah, but cool. no that was fun it's fun to like run into people and then try and like figure out the circle of small lake city if you're yeah. not in mm -hmm. utah i'm sure you have your own version of whatever that is because i feel like every city yeah is is yes. small and this year i figured out just how small like new york city was I mean, so I just feel like, yeah, like we be nice to people because you're probably going to run into them at a party somewhere. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just and be nice. And especially if it's doing something like, you know, that I feel that way with like the podcasting stuff that we do and yes. things like that. I, I try to be nice and respectful and everything, yeah. mainly just as a good rule of life, but also because you don't know when you're going to run into these people or um, cause I've met a lot of people through social media, through the podcasting stuff and then meet them in real life. And I'm glad that I was, you know, respectful most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm always respectful. I'm just glad most of the time that I was. I have another <laughs> tangent too, before we get into, um, the show today, speaking of I, being respectful on social media, like someone just requested my friendship and I looked mm -hmm. at who they were friends with and I was like, I mean, they're friends with some pretty cool people like i'll mm -hmm. give this a shot sure two days later he comments on my post it was a picture that i posted from uh friday from good things utah and he's like just take it out and i'm like what are you talking about and he's like your nose what? ring just take it out and i want to respond back to him like if you don't like who I am, you should just walk right out that social uh -huh. media door. You friend, yeah. you requested my uh -huh. friendship. If uh -huh. you didn't go look, like, I'm not going to go to your page and be like, you need to shave, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. why would I do that? Even if I think Holy it, cow. like. Yeah. Dude, none of your business. Oh. Yeah. People are Keep weird. Scrolling. But, yeah. Like, oh. that's the other thing. That's the other thing. I have friends that maybe dress or look different than how I choose to dress or look, but that doesn't mean I tell them, Hey, Hey, change your hair, man. Just, yeah. just, you know, I mean, like, I will please. every day. <laughs> well, and, it, and I guess it depends too. I think that's oh, one thing that's, you that to social. Change, Al. Yeah. I think social media though, like it, it feels like you're making a real connection when you're not necessarily like I would, I would respond and say things differently to the two of you on social media than I probably would to other people that I don't know as right. well, because we have a relationship that goes beyond just social media. I could be a little bit more forward. I could be a little bit more jokey and you guys would know that I'm joking around, but if I barely know someone on social media, I'm oh. not going to be like, dude, you should whatever change what, oh. and why? 
And to say it like that, like take it out, period. What? My post was about the movie list that I put up (laughs) on social media with my top movie list of the year. And it was literally take it out, period. Yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? Take what out? One of the movies off my list? Like, I'll get into that conversation. That'll be fun. Like, yeah. yeah. We could could discuss that. My nose ring? Go away. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm like, I want to be nice. I want to be nice, but I also am not going to be nice to people that go out of their way to when be idiots. When they're being disrespectful of you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get that. Sorry. My crock pot started beeping and I was like, oh, I don't know okay. how long that's going to beep. <laughs> <laughs> What's for dinner? Dave makes every year for New Year's Day. He has one superstition. Okay. Okay. And it's on New Year's Day. He has to make sauerkraut and pork and potatoes and like all this and he puts it in a crock pot even when we went to disneyland on our road wow. trip he brought the crock pot bought all the stuff and made it our hotel room smelled like sauerkraut and beef for three days but it that, was delicious i was gonna say that sounds amazing <laughs> sign me up i need this recipe I'm a, to try I'm making new yeah he home. makes it from scratch every every year it's his one superstition he has to start the That's year funny. off with sauerkraut and beef so he's not he's not overly superstitious but he's a little stitious he's stitious it is like stish he's stish he's stish, stish. <laughs> well, i love it he's well so stish. uh it was it was fun watching. I, I had to go back. I didn't see it live, but I did go back and watch your top ten picks. And I like how you did it, Val. It was the most satisfying movies of the year for you, yeah. which is which is nice because I think people get caught up on a lot of these critics lists out there on the best movies of the year. Like it's okay to say, look, these were the movies that when I went, I got the experience I wanted, and I felt satisfied and and happy. Because it could yeah. be a really good movie, and I come out and I'm like, that was it was good, it was just boring, and I didn't like it. Yeah, you know, right. And I think so. I think it's because I had already put, I was already posting on my website, um, like everything I had voted for, like the top five in right. each category for like award season movies. So I figured everybody was going to see those. But what are the movies that I think that you would really enjoy? Yeah. That other people may, and there were some on there that I'm sure you heard of, right? Mm -hmm. And it was hard because I could have done a top 20. Like there were just, there were Mm -hmm. movies that I wanted to talk about that like uh, the love, uh, the love song on there. um, I didn't get, that didn't make a place on there. The menu, I was also super satisfied after seeing the menu that, but I had to like really, you know, just the top 10, especially for TV. Um, Yeah. But you know, in this, Mrs. Harris Goes to Bar- Paris that we're talking about today was number two um, mm-hmm. yeah. out of 10 on that list um, because I remember watching this movie and thinking, one, this lady reminds me so much of my bonus mom, Tana. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, this is, and I immediately called her, is like, even probably before the movie was over. No, I watched it two times in a row. And on my second time, I'm like, you have to see this movie like you're gonna love this yeah. movie um it's not something that i think you need to watch all the time but i just think in the midst of everything else that was coming out mm-hmm. it was kind of this unexpected nice movie like it was just this yeah. nice movie and i love the actors that are in it mm-hmm. um yes. and i i specifically didn't tell you about a specific actor that was in it because i wanted you to get as excited as i was when i first saw him um. Yes. It took me a minute and I was like, oh my gosh. It's, 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 there he is. Um, it, and I, I was glad that this made your list. I was also glad, I, if I remember right, Marcel the Shell with Shoes on was your number yes. one most satisfying. Mm-hmm. And I love that movie so much. I, I, don't, I, I don't think it was my number one. I think it was on there. Was it it was number? on there then. Yeah. I, I'm I pretty sure maybe. Top Gun Maverick was my number one. Which is also a great pick for number mm-hmm. one. I When I at work we have these this meeting every day and we have a prompting question where we're trying to get to know each other as a team it's a team building thing one one of the questions was the best movie we saw that year and i shared marcel the shell with shoes on and they're like i didn't hear about that one and i said well (laughs) let me tell you what it's about and then they just looked at me even more strangely i'm like just trust me 
watch I don't it. even know my own list. So um, Marcel <laughs> was number five. Okay. okay. Number four was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Okay. Number three was Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Number two okay. was Top Gun Maverick. And number one was 13 Lives. Okay. Mm. I think 13 Lives is probably um, one of Ron Howard's best movies that he's made wow. visually. He really knows how to capture um, a story that takes place in small places like Apollo 13, just really yeah. creating such a, an atmosphere in the same place that you're going to see over and over and over again. Like the cinematography yeah. in this, the characterization, the storytelling. Um, and I remember getting a thank you from Dave when I said, okay, let's watch this because it was like three weeks of like women talking and blonde and like all of this, like, I, I just need to see heavy. one movie where a woman doesn't get hurt. And I'm like, I got one. <laughs> yeah. Cause he's like, I am so sorry. Like, I know you have to go through this every day as a woman, but he's like, it's a lot. Can we watch something where a woman is not getting hurt mentally or physically or anything? And I said, we're going to watch this cause it's streaming on Amazon prime. And he was like, thank you. That was so good. So yeah, and if, you, if you like that one, the documentary on Disney plus is yes. really, really good. Yes. Okay. So those are a couple to check out then. Uh, this movie though, Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. You suggested it to us, Val. We wanted to in January pick movies guys. Like here's where, where my mind is out when I get to January, December is fun. It's festive. There's lights everywhere. People are excited. And then we hit January and nobody's excited about anything. Like it is just blah. The weather is awful. It's dark 27 out of the 24 hours in the day. It's just <laughs> like, it's just miserable. And you tell and, we get the inversion. Yeah, we get the inversion, which means the air quality is awful. awful. We can't breathe when we go outside. Yeah. And it's cold. It's just, it's, it's so just we, wanted, we wanted to pick some movies that you could watch during January that would hopefully pick you up and pick your spirits up a little bit. And we said that and Val said, we should watch Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And I'll be honest, I, we, I had not heard of this. We started watching it about halfway through. I turned to my wife and I said, if anything happens to Mrs. Harris, <laughs> I am never going to forgive Val for making me watch this movie because we must protect her at all costs. <laughs> Yeah. And I just think also like you should start your year off with like joyful, happy things to get your mind in the right state. And I just love how like in this movie, Leslie Manville, who plays Mrs. Harris is fantastic. Like, mm -hmm, I don't is. know, like I always try to think like, okay, who else could have played this? Because when you get into good acting and good storytelling, hopefully you cast somebody that you can't picture anyone else as Mrs. Mm -hmm. Harris. And I, she melted into that character. I saw yeah. nothing else except for Mrs. Harris and the way that she has this outlook on life and the way that she deals with her ups and her downs. And she has a lot of ups and downs and there mm -hmm. are some like very unrealistic things that happen in this movie, but that's why it's so great because we want those things to happen to yes. good people. Yeah. And, and I just thought the the side characters were a lot of fun. You know, we have um, Jason Isaac who like for him to be Jason Isaacs to be in this movie this year. And he was in mass last year where he was this huge part of that movie. And it was such a different kind of movie. And then to just kind of be this yeah, like, you're little thing you know he was yeah. just there and it, but it was such a good character for him like mm -hmm. there wasn't i loved it because every character had a purpose and yes. i love when movies have it they're not overbearing it doesn't feel like too many people everybody fits in the world that's being created and has a purpose and that's why i love yeah i i agree and he and he plays this role archie really really well like just he's it's very like all the hints are there about how he feels about Mrs. Harris throughout the movie. And, mm -hmm. but it's so subtle and so subdued. And I feel like that's how Archie would be at this point. I mean, that's how he would be at, at this point in his life at this point in time. That is, and he just plays it really, really well. Um, and, and you're right. There are some unrealistic things that happen, but in that moment when 
the, you know, the guy comes from the military to talk about the pension and everything. And she's like getting all upset. She's like, Oh, what now you want more money from me? Cause he got overpaid and all this other stuff after she had just lost at the tracks. And I'm like, yeah, get out of her house, man. I was going to come through the TV and kick him out myself. And then he's like, no, 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 you got it all wrong. We owe you money. And then it just kind of snowballs from there. And it's like, yeah, you do want that to happen to Mrs. Harris. You want her to get all of the good things. Uh, you want her to get to Paris and you want her to be able to buy this dress. And then that's a whole another adventure that, you know, was, was just incredible to watch her growth at that, at that point in the story. I, <laughs> I thought I, somebody else was going to talk. I've been talking I know, I the like, whole okay. time. Um, I have some trivia um, about this Ooh. movie. Like this is the third time I watched it. Um, and now that like I've seen it and I'm paying attention to kind of more, because there's a lot of details that go on. And so mm -hmm. the basic storyline is Mrs. Harris. Um, she's a cleaning lady. She doesn't hate her job. She just goes to work. She knows all of her clients. You know, she she this she know this is her life you know and she's like this right. is it and she has a best friend and they go and have you know they go out every once in a while and then go there's you, you know they go dancing and she but she's kind of like she keeps everything tight she has things that she does every day when she crosses the bridge she talks to her husband um you know that's not there um but you know mm -hmm. just kind of just the all these things that she does but like for her to put all of that money on a bet, that was like not like her at all, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what was a sign? But the whole idea yeah, is, it was is that, a sign. yeah, she she finds this dress in a closet of one of her clients, and I think it's so funny that the lady's dress um, that it's the mom from oh my gosh, this lady that play the British lady that plays that awful. Mm -hmm. um, person she always plays an awful british lady like in every movie i've ever seen i don't know her name but in every movie i've ever seen her in she plays an awful british woman um <laughs> but so she finds a dior gown in her closet and she wants a dior gown she doesn't know that she has anywhere to to wear it but she's like this this is my life this matter. is my my dream i want why shouldn't i be able to have this gown so she starts like saving all of her money, working more so that she can get this gown. And when she finally gets to Dior, um, and it's such kind of like a meet cute moment um, mm -hmm. when she, she doesn't know what's going on. She gets into the building when there's supposed to be this private viewing and she gets in, you know, because of a ridiculous reason. Um, but then she can't actually get into the viewing. She thinks she's just going to go pick up a dress Right, right. And like get back on. I just go to the shop, buy and a go dress, home, and, right? Yeah. I'm gonna fly to Paris. I'm gonna go to Dior, which you can do now. Right. But you can't like go into the house of Dior, which is where they make them, and mm -hmm. just buy one and leave. And that that's not how they do couture Dior. Um. And so she was just kind of flabbergasted. Like I was here first. So she gets to go in because she meets a man that's going in and he's like, she can be my guest, you know? And so it's just like this cute, like meet cute kind mm -hmm. of thing. But what I noticed about um, that whole moment when they're watching the fashion show that I didn't notice the first two times because like it didn't occur to me is that most of the models are women of color. And mm -hmm. I looked it up and Dior was the first fashion house in the 1950s mm. to have women of color be models and there were a few that got really famous in Europe when you know the United States was still like the modeling industry was all white women but yeah. Dior had you know Asian women and black women and like all different um versatile women and nobody questioned it because he was Dior. And I just thought at that time yeah, for him to do that and have, because like, especially the women that were sitting in that room that are going to go and buy those dresses. If you were to do that mm -hmm. in the United States at that time, women oh. would have not even sat in that. They would have gotten up and left. Right. They would right, have yep. left the room. They would have not bought any of that. Like he would have gone under, you know, right. like for a different reason than why he was yeah. going under. The movie. But yeah. Well, and that, and that's the interesting thing, right? Everybody, they're, they're not going to let her in 
until she pulls out all the cash that she brought with her. <laughs> then it changed. Oh, you have money, two. but then oh, wait, they still didn't want to let her in. Yeah. Well, one <laughs> right. lady didn't, but but a couple of them were like, but but what was cute was then that her story, like, hey, this cleaning lady from England has flown here just to buy a dress and she saved up all of her money to be here and she's sitting down to view the collection. And they spread that throughout like all the models here and all the workers hear it. And it kind of becomes this fun story that they're all excited about. Um, and I thought that was like what I love about Mrs. Harris, the character throughout the whole thing is she is just herself all the time. Yeah. And what gets her in the doors that she shouldn't get into is that she's just being her. What gets yeah. her the attention of people that shouldn't be paying attention to her is that she's just her and it works. Yeah. Um, and I love that. And and we meet Alba Batista, who she is so stunning. If she is on the screen, oh, wow. yeah. I can't mm -hmm. stop looking at her. I she is Chris Evans' girlfriend, mm -hmm. if you weren't aware oh, of this. I didn't and know she's that. like teeny tiny, and Chris Evans is like, you know, not teeny tiny, mm -hmm. at least I don't I'm not sure. But she has those old Hollywood she layers does. of just like stunning, like not just beautiful, stunning. You can't look away. And then I do want to throw out there that if you are a fan of Emily Goes to Paris, not Mrs. Harris Goes to but Emily in Paris, mm -hmm. um, I guess he really likes um, shows that have Paris in the name, but Lucas Bravo is also in Emily in Paris. So if you've been watching that and you're a huge fan of him, because he's super dreamy, he is also yeah. in this movie. Well, I think he's I think he's French, and that's probably why he ends up in a lot of those movies that have Paris. <laughs> but there the are name. so many French movies that don't have Paris in the name. <laughs> now I but what a really good thing like... to be like, I, hey, I thought give it was that a guy. I yeah. thought it was a requirement that I had to have Paris in the name and it has to have a shot of the Eiffel Tower. So <laughs> I really liked Bravo in this. I thought there were moments where I thought, James Gunn, if you're looking for a new Superman, he's got that Clark mm. Kent vibe down pretty good. Oh. Um, so there you go, James. There's your tip from me, a <laughs> Superman fan. I know and you're I mean, a loyal listener of the show. I mean, Brits make good superheroes. Yeah. Yep. This is true. Um, but yeah, I, I loved his character and I love Natasha um, because she is beautiful, stunning model, but she's also struggling trying to be what everybody thinks that she should be. And she yeah. is much more intellectual and she doesn't want to be the face of Dior. She feels like she that's just not who she is um, and that she finds a kindred spirit in Mr. Falafel. That's not his name. <laughs> Mr. Falafel. <laughs> I know that's not his name. It is Favel. Favel. Yeah. Favel. Andre Favel. Yeah. So I, I just love, I mean, and, and everything Mrs. Harris does to kind of bring them together and push them together and kind of nudge them in the right direction. I love that. Um, there, there was just so much about this movie. Um, one of the funny things that happened while we were watching it, my wife and I put it on as if it was like bedtime and the kids were all settling down. We were watching it and we weren't too worried about watching it with the kids still awake or anything because there's not, it's PG, it's fine. Yeah. And Ben comes in and every night, our six year old, he likes to sit with us for five or six minutes. He calls it his bedtime cuddle and he will not go to bed until he's done that. So like, yeah, sure. We set a timer and he knows once that alarm goes off, it's time to go. Well, he comes in and sits down. We're like, yeah, sure. Sit down. And it is the minute that they're in the cabaret. Like <laughs> that is the scene, like the one and it's, and it wasn't even overly bad. No, but we're like, but... oh my gosh, this would be the one scene that you come in and you sit in. And, he, and I always forget for that that scene's even in that movie because I know, it's, really it's really not. not... Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's just. To me, I watched that scene. I'm like, this is the French just being the French. This is it, this, you know. I but know. he, yeah. uh, he's like, well, it does make sense because Paris is the city of love. And I was, <laughs> I guess you're right, son. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that, but there you go. Dude, so that, that was is his. The best. That was Tracy, his thought. I'm beginning to think that you hate this movie because you have not said anything. No, about it. no, I'm just listening to you guys. <laughs> um, I, it made me really want to go back to Paris. Um, I, I'd go back in a heartbeat. The the city is just so incredible. Um, 
the history and, and I was I was just noticing at some points when they're especially at night they they would use a really soft focus and well they'd use a longer lens and so they're back the camera's back a ways and then it kind of pushes the people in closer but it blurs out the background and you just get these like little pops of color from the lights in the background and stuff and it was just it's just beautifully shot it was it was just great yeah well and I love that they picked this kind of like it's romantic, not in the way that you would think it's romantic right. in the way that like she has a dream it's for mm -hmm. this dress, you know? Um, and she's just a really good person. And then that she goes to Paris during the time that all of the trash, <laughs> garbage, other, the garbage trucks are on strike. <laughs> so in the most beautiful city in the world, and it looks like New York, like there's just yeah. trash Tiles. everywhere. And it gets worse as the movie goes too. <laughs> and it I does. love how she becomes friends with the drunks in the train. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. The train station. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff that she does that you're like, you shouldn't do. This is not a model of how you should travel at all. Like stop yeah. and like befriend <laughs> the like sketchy people hanging out at the, the train station drinking but she from does the same and, and model? on the bench yeah um i loved the lady avalon the the villain in it and how she <laughs> you know is writing down what she sees mrs harris write down and she gets temptation uh and uh and then her downfall because her husband is the king of yeah. rubbish in in uh <laughs> paris and well, i love her little emo daughter employees <laughs> yes, she's like completely disinterested in everything. And I thought, what did emo kids listen to in the 50s? Because, right? you know, Hot Topic wasn't around. So how did no. they find out the music they should be listening to? I don't know. I don't it's know. A, it's a question for another show. Yeah. I'll have to do some research on that, Jake, and get back to us. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what are you looking up? What Nemo kids listened to in the 50s in Paris, France? I don't know. <laughs> Jake's uh, the French message boards. If anybody knows, please. Yeah. When when she got home and Mrs. Penrose was there, and I'm like, she's going to give her the dress, and I'm going to be so ticked because she's going to ruin it, and this is going to be awful, and it's exactly how it plays out. But when she gets that big <laughs> box from Dior... And she goes to open it. And I turned to my wife and I said, if that's not temptation, I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know what story <laughs> we're trying to tell. Because if it's anything but that in the box, then... I feel like this movie was a little hostile for you. Like you had a lot of hostile feelings. <laughs> I just wanted everything to work out perfectly for Mrs. Harris. And I just and wanted her that to be movie. happy. It is a happy ending where things don't make and, sense or need to you know have a reason but they make everything believable enough that you're like i'm good with it i'm yeah, good with yeah. it and i love that it wasn't just that she spilled like wine on the dress like no the dress caught fire <laughs> oh my gosh and of course it did of course it did like when she was like i mean you know how well i take care of things most of the time i'm like no she does you don't it's awful your house is but, but I loved but the I, reaction to what Mrs. Harris did, like when she yeah. found her dress that way, and she just puts the key in the thing, not doing like how could, she went to her mom's to like, you know, because she was bereaved with all this happened. But you didn't like say you're sorry, you, no. didn't, you know, just well, she left a note and it said, "Don't worry, I'm fine." <laughs> yeah, I don't worry, I'm good. <laughs> the dress obviously is ruined, but I'm fine. And and then uh, she I'm left sorry. like she left a couple bucks. Yeah, or pounds. Or whatever. I, I yeah. loved, I loved the comparison between Mrs. Harris after she had gone to Paris and had come home, and how she was interacting with the people she worked for compared to Mrs. Harris before, uh -huh. because Lady Don, that's the mean British lady that had yeah. the, the original dress, just walked all over her, and Mrs. Yeah. Harris just so good natured, like okay, you know, right. whatever. She hadn't been paid by her, time. yeah. And, and everything else. And then afterward, when she's talking to her and, you know, she's talking about, oh, you know, I can't afford to pay you or whatever. And she's like, you know what? I'm done. You're going to have to pay me the full amount that you owe me. And we're going to close the account and see ya. Like, what? And she's like, you can't treat people like scum all the time. You just yeah. can't. And then walked yeah. out and I was like, yes, Mrs. Harris. But I mean, I guess <laughs> when you go and you lead a strike 
up to the office door of Christian Dior himself and yeah. revolutionize the way they do business, I yeah. guess you feel like you can't come back and just be walked all over again by people. You know, I kind of wish that would have been a hidden camera to capture all of Jake's reactions for this one. <laughs> I could just see him. Yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> well, and well, <laughs> Lady Daunt um, was in Four Weddings and a Funeral and then What a Girl Wants. So yes. um, if you're like me and you watched those movies a bunch when you were younger, um, then you'll know exactly who this. Yeah. And she's not nice. I, I did love Mr. Uh, Newsome or whoever, the guy yes. that had all the nieces. It took yes. me a minute. Well, in the second one, I was like, wait a second. He's got a lot of young nieces that come and stay with them. They were all, all right. super surprised when he said, this is my niece. They're like, yeah. no. <laughs> I see what's going on here. Uh, the only part that, no, I liked every part of the movie, but I was a little bit nervous when the one guy uh, in France compared her to Mrs. Mops, the cleaning yeah. lady. And she was like, was wait, I rough. remind you of the cleaning lady, Mrs. Mops. Yes. He didn't the mean that Marquee way. Marquee but... de... Yeah. 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 Well, I think she was falling for him and she was opening her heart for the first time in a long time. And he was, he just enjoyed the company. Like, yeah. I think he looked at her as just pleasant company. He was being um, a nice person to another nice person. Right. But right. especially during that time period, anytime something like that happens, if it's a man and a woman, you would think, you know, that yeah. there's got to be some feelings because he was being very nice to her and he didn't have to he could have just no brushed her off but i think also like the way he talked about his wife you know like he wasn't in any place to be no. having those kind of feelings about anyone but then when he compared her you know to miss mops I, yeah. I felt bad for her because i don't he again all of these people that she interacts with most of them are like this Yes. They're they're higher up in rank. They have more money. They don't have to think about. They're not used to thinking about other people's feelings, mm -hmm. right? And so he thought in his mind that he had a lot of admiration for Mrs. Mops. Like this is a person that right. he grew up with, and really, you know, but in a different you. way than she wanted to be thought right. of. Right. She yeah. she wanted the romantic. Yeah, feelings but I do and... like how it came back in the end where he helped you know, be one of the people to send the dress and the flowers. Like he yeah. wasn't, well, I he think wasn't on his part, by it. on his part, there wasn't any intention to make her feel bad or anything. No, when he uh, even said that, I think he, I think she, I think it was important for her though, because she needed to figure out how to open her heart. Yeah. So that Archie could come in. Cause Archie's the man. <laughs> and that's when, those when dogs, he, man, you really got to love someone to, to also have those dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That's Those true. Are horses. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when she's, you know, when he was saying, Oh, you know, you remind me, I figured out who you remind me of. It's the cleaning lady. Again, I was like, this guy is breaking her heart. And I was about ready. And my wife's like, no, it's good. Cause now she's going to go back and end up with Archie. I'm like, okay, it's like, okay, that's fine. <sighs> that's fine. Calms down. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I love about it is when she comes in, in temptation to the Legion ball, yeah, and she looks amazing, and he tells her that she looks amazing, and then he's like, "I mean, you always look amazing. It's not the dress." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, Archie, That's good. That was good." I was ready to marry him right there on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love how he got jealous of all the guys that were at her house the day that she was getting all the deliveries. Yeah, he's like, like, "Oh, sorry, oh, sorry." They all have uniforms on. You don't think they're there for purpose? Like, <laughs> and like has she ever given you any inclination that like there would be anything anyway? Yeah, it was just it was cute. It was cute. Well, and but also when he comes in and he breaks the window so he can yeah. open the door, and he's just standing there in a panic. He's like, "Yeah, Violet said you weren't answering the door." Like, like Archie really cares a lot for her. Yeah. I guess he does. But I do so. like what you said earlier. Um, about um had the different characterizations because i i think that there are a few characters in the movie not just natasha but also mrs harris and also probably archie um mm -hmm. and claudine um is that 
they're all more than what they seem. And I yes. like how it kept coming back to that storyline because then when they go to Claudine's house <laughs> and they realize that when she's home, she is a lot to deal with. Yeah. She's taking care of her sick husband, yeah. you know, that really can't do anything. And she's not all fancy. She, you know, she's just in regular clothes and, you know, you never know what someone is going through. And, mm -hmm. every, you know, everyone is more than what you see. And that's how with her, like, she's like, I should get a Dior dress just because I look like this or I, you know, am a wash woman doesn't mean that I shouldn't get a dress if I can pay for it, you know, and then, you know, so I just think all the different characters um, are a little more than what they look like mm -hmm. at the beginning, because when we first, even when we first see Archie's character you think he's a womanizer and then he works yeah. at the track so you know like he's a degenerate gambler yeah and yeah. so they kind of give you these ideas of him and then he's not any of those things no so. no he's a he's a decent good guy well, it's and great too when he's trying to talk her out of the bed like trust yeah. me you do not want to do this. She's like, no, it's a sign. <laughs> and his boss is like standing right behind him. Like, no, she wants to do it. Like take her money. She's like, my money's good. He's like, uh, yeah. I felt so bad for the dog even. That, just have that a race. Day. Oh my gosh. I was like, this is going to be, she's going to win. She's going to win. Cause the dog's winning. And then he just stops to like get distracted by the grass on the field, on the track. <laughs> Poor dog. That dog's dead now. I put him down. Wow. That's why I felt bad for that dog. Because if you're if you're your horse or your dog doesn't race well, they don't last long. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I just brought the move. So good, fun movie. <laughs> either no, that, Archie either adopted that or the that dog, dog ends up with the Simpsons. No, that's, Archie that's adopts all the dogs. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I like this movie. Before we get to the grades, though, okay. if you guys are watching this at home or you're listening to this, it is New Year's. It is time to make New Year's resolutions. So you should make a resolution to like this video oh. and subscribe to our channel and leave a comment. And look, you do that today. You make the resolution, you like the video, you leave a comment. You can check one resolution off your list already. Look how productive you're already being Aww. this new year. So we would love it if you did that. That helps the video get noticed. Comment with what your favorite feel-good movie is. Uh, and maybe it's one that we'll pick to watch. Maybe it won't be, but we would love to see hear it anyway. So Yes, indeed. All right. Let's grade this movie. Val? Do you want to start or do you want to end? Yeah, no, I'll start. It's an A okay. for me. I think that's not a surprise. Um, again, it's just a feel good. It's one of those movies that you probably will forget about, but then you'll see it and you'll be like, that's exactly what I need to watch today. So it's going to be that every once in a while movie. But for me, when I first saw it, I watched it twice in a row because all of the sad movies that I had been watching this year, it was a breath of fresh air. Um, and again, I just love Leslie Manville and how she just disappears into this character. And like you said, Tracy, all the cinematography of these different shots, like up those stairs, made it look like those stairs went on forever. And then they cut to a scene where she's then going up a spiral of stairs to his apartment. And I'm like, how long has this lady got to walk with her suitcase? And she's just smiling away, just happy. And then when she gets to the apartment, do you think she's going to sit down and relax? Nope. She starts cleaning the apartment, and I love it. Yep. All right, Tracy, it's your turn. Now, remember, uh, if anything happens to Mrs. Harris, I'm holding you personally accountable. <laughs> so. Uh, an A? No. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't expect an A from you guys. No, uh, th this is a really good film. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I didn't love it as much as Val did, but that's okay. Um, I'll go B plus on it. I, I thought this was really cute. Um, the, I, the way that I saw it and maybe it was different, but I couldn't get subtitles for the French parts. Did you guys have subtitles for that part? When there yeah. was a lot of, I can't remember. Through? Yeah. I think yeah. there was. Okay. There wasn't on mine. And so I'm like having to kind of guess as to what was being said. Oh, dang. So, yeah. So. I did have subtitles for mine. 
okay. So that kind of took me up just a little bit, you know, that's not a big deal. But, yeah. Um, no, it's a, it's a real, it's a real cute, fun movie. It was one that I'd heard good things about and I was interested to see. So I'm glad you recommended it. Yeah. It, it's an A for me. It's, it's a good movie. I, I agree, Val. It's not necessarily one that I'm going to watch over and over again, but it's still like, it delivers exactly what I want it to, to deliver. And sometimes it's okay to sit down and have a movie experience that is exactly what you want that movie experience to be. Sometimes it's great to have a movie experience that's completely different than what you expected. But in this case, I wanted everything to work out. I wanted the super mega happy ending at the end of this for her. I got it. I was pleased. It was fun. Um, and I was emotionally invested in the movie right from the beginning. And, and that is a good thing for me as well. So for me, it's an A as well. To me, the, it was very reminiscent to when we watched um, the big year at the beginning yeah. of 2021, 20, mm -hmm. I don't know, a couple of years ago. And we watched it for Jack Black month. And it was one that none of us were super familiar with. And then we watched it. We're like, oh yeah, no, that was actually a really good movie. Really good. And now, you know, so that to me, this was reminiscent of that. I like it. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. It it's is streaming. On Peacock, right? Only. Yep. I think it's only on Peacock. And this is what's cool. So I let, I was watching the movie and I just let it go. And it said, Peacock was like, oh, you just watched Mrs. Harris go to Paris. We're going to have you watch Devil Wears Prada. Watching those two movies back mm. to back, super fun night. I could see that. There you go. There you go. Good double feature. We don't typically <laughs> do a double feature for you, but there you go. Devil Wears Prada. Thank you. Peacock. After this. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for listening. We hope you had a safe and wonderful New Year's celebration. Um, and we hope all of the best for you in 2023. Uh, and we hope that part of that best for you is listening to our show or watching it. Cause like, how can we make it worse? We're only going to make it better. <laughs> so, uh, next yes. week, um, I am going to have a list out of the top 23 most anticipated movies of 2023 Ooh. to go along with um, the top lists that I put for 2021 last year. So there are so many movies coming out this year that I'm excited for. Yeah. Excellent. There, there are some good know ones. What I'm you're excited, excited to see for. the list. Yeah, yeah. Let us know what you're excited for. Um, I almost asked the dumbest question that was ever asked on this show when you said you were doing the 23 most expected for 2023. I almost said, why did you pick 23 as the number? <laughs> the thing is, is I could have picked 50. It was really hard yeah. to just pick 23 because there are so many Marvel superhero movies coming out this yeah, year that true. I feel like that's half my list. Um, but there are also some other movies coming out that are not Marvel related whatsoever that I'm excited about. I know a lot of people are anticipating the new Barbie movie just because yeah. of everything that's going on around it. And I kind of really want to see it just that, to see if it that works. Teaser trailer, that yeah. teaser trailer was brilliant. Shang Chi is in the Barbie movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Simu. Um, I think what's been really good over the last year uh, you hear everybody talk about the only movies that people are interested in making are the big Marvel superhero type movies. But I think last year there were a lot of really good movies that were not that. Yeah. And I think we have more of those to come in 2023. So film and cinema is not dead, despite yeah. what you may have heard. There to was the not one Marvel movie on my top 10 movies. So. Yeah. And yeah. This was a really good Marvel year for movies. movies. Yeah. Now, I mean, Top Gun Maverick could have been a Marvel movie, really. I mean, <laughs> He's well, it's, Maverick's it's really, kind of a superhero. Of a Star Wars film, but that's okay. Yeah, but this Star Wars, if it were real, because it's yeah. obviously <laughs> real. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And until next time, we won't see you at the movies. This has been an Age of Geek media production.